This is uh, the Lewis structure that I'm going to assume that you have a limited exposure to the Lewis structures, and then I'm going to go walk you through this. So we are dealing with a molecule here. Okay? Molecule means different atoms are connected by bond, right? And you know how many electrons in the bond? Two electrons, right? If you have a double bond, double, double it up, four electrons. So we need to figure it out. Uh, when people say I, HiO3, that means those atoms are all connected, so you, you need to connect it and uh, make it up uh, the molecule uh, doing the Lewis structures. And it's also, uh, it will be nice. The, the first thing is, I also wanted to uh, get familiar with what is called the former charges. Formal charges is uh, each atom can, can be either neutral or negative or positive. The goal of uh, Lewis structure is to minimize the formal charges as much as you can, but sometimes you need to have a formal charge. One, you know, one of the atoms must have a formal charges to, to fill the, I guess, a charge requirement. Okay. Uh, so let's look at this one. And uh, you start from the, what it's called, the counting the number of valence electrons. So I think the, let's, let's talk about this. H. How many valence electrons we are talking about? This actually number one problem is pretty hard. And but it's, I, I, I think I like it so that we can, we can work it. How many valence electrons? How many electrons? So chemistry, uh, we actually, even I got confused sometimes, total number of electrons versus number of valence shell of electrons. Chemists actually just do care more about the valence electrons because they are the one who can form the bond. The one in under, the very underneath it, the core, doesn't do anything. So, it's, uh, so I'm, I'm counting hydrogen has uh, how many valence electrons? One, right? It's right here, one electron. What about the iodine? Iodine is uh, here, right? That's right. So to me, iodine is a seven electrons. Oxygen is right here, six electrons. And you have three of them, right? So I'm just going to put these atoms and take out all the valence shell electrons. I'm just going to count the total number of valence shell electrons. So that will be one plus seven plus 18. That will be 26 electrons. Valence electron. So far, so good, okay? So far, nothing really. And then you need some intuition uh, to saying, okay, if the molecule is H, I O three. I want to put sort of most kind of a exotic atom. That's not scientific description. So something that is not hydrogen, something that is not oxygen. You want to put it in the center. Okay. Some even the halogen. You sometimes they go in, but most of the cases they are in the outside. So which one do you think that you want to put it in the center when you write the molecule structure? Iodine goes to the center. That's uh, most, uh, my first intuition. And then you're going to put oxygen surrounding this exotic atom at the center. So I'm going to put oxygen, you guys put anywhere. I just happen to put it this way. And the hydrogen is sort of the piggybacking on oxygen. So do you remember H H2O? It's a nice example that hydrogen is connected to the Oxygen. So I'm going to put an H here. You can put any H's next to oxygen. So so far I didn't do anything. I just kind of sprinkle the electron, sprinkle the atoms on the paper. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what I have. So I'm going to first of all I need to con connect the electrons, right? How many electrons I have used so far? How many bonds? Eight. Four. So, yeah, four bonds, eight electrons, right? So that's eight electrons. Eight electrons for bonding. 
and that might that might change later, but I'll, I want to do it for now. So I used up eight electrons. So how many how many do I have left? Eighteen electrons. This is something something left. And then I have to make everyone happy. What what I mean is a satisfied octet row, right? I guess this is an exception to the octet row, and this one feel like they have a two electron belongs to them, so they are happy. But what about this oxygen? One, two, three, four. You need four more electrons. This one, you, I feel like having two electrons, so I need th three more, ele three pairs of electrons with six electrons. So let, let me do this. Uh, do this on a piece of paper. So here, I'm going to put dots. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to just put this electron out and in, and I'm going to deal with the central atom later. Just let's make sure that oxygens and hydrogens are all happy, and they are okay. okay. That when I say okay, is that some of them is actually not happy, but it's, as far as the octet rule is concerned, they are all good. Right? So then how many dots did I use? 6, 6, 12, 4. So 16? I used 16 electrons as a dots, right? Long pair electrons, essentially. Right? These are the long pair electrons. I have used that up. And how many do you have left? Two electrons. So I guess where did this one go? There you go, right? So that's the last one that we need to do. Okay, I think I'm, I'm done as far as the octet rule is concerned, right? But you are not done yet because do you remember the, I asked you, can you indicate the formal charges? Okay, so the formal charge is a business that you should, you should know and there are formulas. Okay, there are formula, formal charges is a number of, I think the non non pair electron plus half of the bonded electron and something like that from the balance shell electrons. You will learn the formulas, but I want to have a more conceptually simple way to, to deal with this. And let me, I like to give this example. Let's say this is a, something that we just draw with a bonding here. Right? Let's, talk, let's talk about oxygen. What are the former charges of this scenario for the oxygen having this case? And then my reference point is how many valence electron oxygen have? They have six, right? They have six. And six is a neutral for them. Six electron is a neutral for them. Let's count the number of electrons that, how many electrons this one, they feel like having it. They feel like having an octet, eight electrons, that's for sure. But now for the counting the formal charges, you only count one. You only count half of what you have from the bond electron. So here, I only count one electron. Although there are two, only one is strictly belongs to me. So I have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do you see how I count it, right? The, this one is all mine, right? This is all mine. So there's a six electron is all mine. This is only half of it is mine, so which is a one electron which belongs to oxygen. So I have a seven electrons. You have six electrons to be neutral. You have seven electrons. One more electron than neutral. Therefore, your formal charges is minus one. That's how you do it. So that's, there is a formula you, you guys can do, but you know, this is even so common that I want you to even remember this. And this is a formal charge, it show up so, so, so many times. How about this? Oxygen with two bonds with that. What are the formal charges on this? Six electron to be neutral, four is to be one of each from the left bond, therefore, 
scale for what? Hmm? Minus two. Zero. Zero, right? Yeah, well, because you see that four, five, six. I want six to be neutral as I have six. So it's an even out. So no formal charges. This is zero. So people do not write formal charges when it's zero, but I'll write this one. Some of the bond is actually oxygen can have a double bond with two electrons. How many formal charges? What are the formal charges? Also zero, right? Do you guys remember the H3O plus? You guys remember that? But let me draw this. Oxygen with this is actually the Lewis structure of hydronium ion. Okay. What are the formal charges of oxygen? Plus one. Plus one. So when you have a hydronium ion. The one that positive charge is actually more focused, more localized on the oxygen. So this is a plus there. Okay? So this is this is a good practice for you to have it on and then let's let's just look at that. So here I, I made a table and you guys can download the PDF file. And this these are the example of what are neutral, what is the negative one, what this is positive. When you look at the nitrogen, nitrogen is five to be neutral, and this is a five electron. Two, all of them belong to them, and each one electron from the bonding, so you got five electrons to be neutral, so they are neutral as well. And this is another class that is actually going to show up many times, and if you look at that, let's, let's look at the chlorine. With, to satisfy the octet rule. This is a, how many, they have satisfied the octet rule, right? Because of bonding, counting to electrons. But now, I'm for the, as far as the formal charge is concerned, in this one, I feel like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So therefore, your formal charge is zero. So this is actually a pretty good scenario when you have no formal charges. Halogen is such a nice organic compound or a bond. They only need one electron. They form the bonding and they, that's it. They don't want to make any funny changes. Whereas this is the, your, the problem that you're going to see here is this one. This is the one you satisfy the formal octet rule, but you at the expenses of developing localizing formal charges on the oxygen and sometimes you need to do something about that and this one this actually first example I'll show you that as an example so let's go back to this now can you guys can see them now what's my formal charges i mean it's a it's so frequent i can do that right and then do you what about the formal charges of iodine in the middle? Iodine, do you remember what's the number? Seven, right? Seven to be neutral. Can you count the electron? How many do they have? Seven. Five. Hmm? They have five, right? Two, three bonds, two electrons from lone pairs. You have a two electron short to be neutral, right? So there what's the formal charges there? plus. That's a two plus. So the, the, the idea of the Lewis, charge, Lewis structure is yeah, satisfy the octet rule, but also minimize the, the formal charge as much as you can. Although they satisfy all the octet rule, you have localized charges so much. This is so electron rich. This is so electron efficient. So this is not good. So the, the molecule want to do something about it. And do you remember this one is a former charges. If I, these two lone pairs are forming extra double bond, so I, this one becomes double bond with this, the former charges are gone. So these lone pair electrons are also donated, and 
And so then my, what I mean by this is, uh, okay, so what you, you used to have a single bond, now you have an extra bond because that extra bond is from the lone pair being shared one more time for the Tonya double bond. And then you can neutralize your former charges. So what's gonna happen is I can choose any one, so I can choose diff different this one to form an extra bonding. By doing so, you this one becomes zero former charges, and actually former charges on this one will go down as well. Okay, there will be one plus. And I can do the same thing. Somebody look at me probably strangely. This is wrong, right? This gotta be negative one. Right? And there's another one. From the double bond. Right? So, what what's your final answer? Iodine in the middle, oxygen. They form double bond, double bond, single bond. Two dots, two pairs, and then that's the final bond. Because what this one wants to change it into this. This is a your final Lewis structures. So octet rule and and also minimize former charges. Okay. So those are the two things that they do. Um, do you how do you get rid of the lower electron hmm? between the higher and the higher? Oh yeah. I, this is so obvious that people do not come back. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that's right. Yep. That's right. That's where I'm getting it, right? So, so but you said iodine, but he's asking, what happened to the iodine now? This is too much, right? And do you remember extended octet rule? Expanded octet rule and extended octet rule. Okay. So let's go back to this. These are the one. If you look at, if you're dealing with atoms and in this row, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, they never make mistake. They have to obey the octave. That's, there's no negotiation. Everything has to obey the octave. 